Hello, my name is Tom and I'm back talking about F1 Fantasy ahead of the 2023 season. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing uh, some of the results I found from some of the numbers that I pulled from last season, where I looked at performance in practice sessions going across into qualifying. Now, this is very important when picking our teams for the 2023 season, because it enables us to see which drivers we can actually trust going from practice sessions into qualifying and therefore hopefully equating into F1 Fantasy points, because that's why we're here, that's why we play the game. Um, so I'm going to explain in this video the kind of the experiment I did last season. Uh, it's a very, very simple experiment, but it's got very interesting results as well. So I'm going to show you um, what I did, and then we'll look at the results in just a minute, which are very interesting, I think. So uh, we'll look at, well, I've got an example here. We were in Zandvoort from 2022. These are the results from Zandvoort, FP1, FP2, FP3, going from left to right on your screen. And what I've done, as you can see in the column here in green, uh, I've taken the average position of each driver from the practice sessions and rank them accordingly. So as an example, we can have a look at George Russell because he's at the top here on FP1. So George Russell was uh, P1 in FP1. He was then P5 in FP2 and P2 in FP3. So across the three sessions on average, his position was 2.7. And I've done that for each of the 20 drivers and then put their average position down here. So you can see Latifi putting up the rear here in P20 who gave an average position of 20. Um, so then according to the average position in practice, I've then in this column here, you can see uh, their position in the hypothetical qualifying. So where they should really finish based on the practice sessions. And this video is all about how reliable the drivers are going from this column in the hypothetical qualifying into the actual qualifying over here on the right. So across the season, last season, I did this for each race. And in fact, if I scroll across my spreadsheet, you can see the big mess of stuff that I've got going on here. So for each race, I did this and I looked at the change from going from the hypothetical qualifying from the practice sessions into the actual qualifying. And you can see in the columns down here on the right for each of the races, you can see how far away each driver was from their actual position. I've done this um, and then I've put it into a nice easy to read bit of spreadsheet right here. Um, so I'll do a small disclaimer before we look at all the data. I mean, you can probably already look at the data because your eyes are just straight away drawn to the nice bright green. I know it. I know what you're looking at. Uh, um, yeah, but uh, disclaimer here has popped up on screen. This data was taken from 15 races last season. Now, last season there were 22 races, so I've omitted seven races worth of data, and that's for the reasons stated here. Practice sessions washed out, it kind of skews the data, just makes it kind of a bit irrelevant to me, so I didn't put it in. Sprint races I've also not included because you only get one practice sessions ahead. Um, so it doesn't really give you that reliable information. Uh, grid penalties and stuff were, where some races were affected massively by grid penalties. And for example, in Abu Dhabi, where there was a huge number of rookies, which completely messed up the, the practice sessions time. So I didn't include Abu Dhabi in this data. And then also a couple of the random drivers, for example, Albon, who missed Monza, wasn't included. So overall, this, this data was taken from 15 races last year. Um, and that's as accurate as I can get it. Going into 2023, I'm going to continue this experiment because I think it's very interesting looking at the numbers now. And well, it's up to you guys, actually. If you want me to do data as a whole for the whole season, regardless of sprint races, or do you want me to do a separate one for sprint races? Do you want me to include all the wet weather nonsense or not? I don't know. But for the purpose of this video and this data, I kind of excluded the sprint races and the wet weather shenanigans. And this is just like reliable data that from my opinion so we'll look at the actual data and what it tells us as you can probably already see the traffic light system i've got here it's currently ranked by who the most accurate are in green goes into the orange and then obviously the red who are the least reliable drivers from last year from the data that i've collected unsurprisingly charles leclerc max verstappen very accurate so this number the average delta from the hypothetical all that means is um how many positions they were away from their practice sessions um performance so Charles Leclerc on average was 0.4 position so very 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 close nearly nearly spot on on average that's because he was nearly always from the practice sessions and qualifying you know getting p1 p2 consistently same with Max Verstappen signs also interestingly very accurate despite a few slip-ups through the season and then kind of unsurprisingly the Latifi's right up there as well because he was consistently p20 p19 and that's why he's so accurate I talked a lot last season about Lando Norris and being very accurate and the McLarens in particular, like you can see Ricardo as well is right up there, almost as accurate as Lando. Very accurate. So I don't know if that's a McLaren thing. Maybe that's to do with the setup that the, the team had, the strategy or the type of car. It could also be to do with the drivers themselves. There's lots of different variables as to why this might happen, but I'm not so much interested in the why. I'm interested in the fact that it, this is happening. And that for me makes Lando Norris a very reliable pick. And, you know, if he's performing badly, 
he's accurate going from practice into quali. If he's performing really well, he's accurate going from practice into quali. And similarly, if he's somewhere in the midfield, in the middle, you know, P10, P11, then it's he's reliable. He's given us information. So when we see the likes of Lando Norris in 2023 doing well in the practice sessions, I can say with some good confidence based on this data that Lando Norris will qualify in that area and therefore probably also finish in that area roughly. So yeah, Lando Norris is definitely a standout one for me. Um, and then further down, we as we move further down, we can see you know the um, the Mercedes boys kind of in the middle here, mid, in the midfield of accuracy, and that's because particularly at the beginning of the season they were very inaccurate. Um, I think they were just all a bit at sea with what's going on with the setup, and they were experimenting a lot. And I think that's affected uh, Hamilton's and Russell's accuracy in this in this chart that you can see or this graph table, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, we're going to look a little bit more at the Mercedes boys in just a minute because they're quite interesting. Um, and then, as you can see, the kind of the pattern going down is that the drivers from each team are kind of, you know, kind of wedged together. We've got, um, we've got, we've got the uh, Red Bulls and the Ferraris right, right at the top. We've got both of the Williams quite near the top because you know they're both generally pretty slow. We've got both McLarens wedged together, both Mercedes wedged together, both Alfa Romeos wedged together, and then the bottom is made up of all the same teams. Um, the most unreliable throughout the season. The Alpha Tories of Sonoda and Gasly just, you know, you think Gasly's, you know, he's done really well in the practice session. He's going to qualify P5, P6. Oh, my God. And then it's like P14. It's like, ah. So going into 2023, I'm a bit scared of picking someone like Gasly. I know he's changed team this year and that might, you know, that might be different. But you can see from the Alpines last year as well, Alonso and Ocon, they weren't very reliable either. So, you know. I'm not. I'm not convinced by Gasly until I've seen him for a few races. Um, but obviously, this is all dependent on the prices when they finally get revealed as well. But this is purely ignoring prices and just purely from reliability side of things. So if we move on a little bit and let's rank this slightly differently, so we can look at who's actually improved. So if we rank this by column C, so now we're ranking it here. Oh. There we go, by this column here, column C. So you can see which drivers across these 15 races improved from the practice times. You can see Lance Stroll was terrible at improving. Only once out of 15 races did Lance Stroll improve from practice into qualifying. Once. And then the converse of that, obviously, is that 13 times out of those 15, a huge percentage of the time, Lance Stroll was falling back from his practice time so he's not good at qualifying and that's kind of backed up by the fact that Lance Stroll is one of the most um the the driver that's been kicked out of Q1 like the most times I don't know the exact numbers like 50 odd times or something in his career or something it's something crazy but yeah um and then you can see Vettel was not far behind um as well so the Aston Martin itself just wasn't very good at qualifying I don't think but it had that reliability and decent race pace for the midfield kind of car, which pushed them forward, kept gaining those positions. And that's why Lance Stroll and Vettel, in my opinion, were actually very good picks last season, despite these numbers. Because um, by moving forward in the race, that's actually how they gained most of their points. Um, yeah, but anyway, back to this column improving from practice. Interesting down the bottom here, Schumacher, although he's not in F1 uh, for this year. Um, but the hazards, the hazards both improved a lot. So that tells me that they, I don't know, it, could, it depends how you want to interpret it, really. Maybe the hazards were a bit all over the place and experimental during the practice sessions, but then nailed it a bit more for the qualifying because they improved quite a lot from practice going into qualifying. Um, interestingly for me as well, Perez, because obviously Perez is going to be on people's radar as a as a fantasy pick for 2023, depending on price. I think he's going to be a lot more expensive than he was last season, so he won't be quite as popular. But it still gives me quite a lot of confidence in Sergio Perez and the fact that not only was he really accurate here at 1.8 on his average delta, but in the, in the amount of times he actually improved from practice. So on average, he's probably roughly uh, qualifying, sorry, practice, practice session times, are probably like third and fourth best behind the likes of Leclerc and Verstappen. Um, but 10 times he actually improved out of the 15. So, you know, two thirds of the time from the data I've collected, he's actually improved which is really good because if he's going to be in the practice session times, you know, averaging P3, P4, P5, and he's consistently improving from that, then he's going to be getting in on, in on, yeah, in on those podium positions uh, from the from the starting grid. So that's really good. Um, let's change the sort again, and we'll have a look at the worst the worst from practice. Actually, before actually two seconds before I do it, I want to talk about the Mercedes because that's this is really interesting, the difference between Russell and Hamilton. Um, George Russell, because you know they were wedged together in the, when I sorted it just from the average. They were wedged together, but now we sorted it from how many times they've improved. Look at George Russell's improving improvement compared to Hamilton. Hamilton's got double the amount of improvements from, from the data I've collected. Russell only improved four times out of the 15 races. Lewis Hamilton improved eight times. 
And on three occasions, he was actually spot on. George Russell was only spot on once. So George Russell, in general, not improving as much as Hamilton. That's interesting, because I think Hamilton and Russell are going to be very similarly priced going into 2023 season. Whether that's right or not, we'll find out hopefully in the next couple of weeks when the when the prices are actually revealed at long last. But yeah, I think it'd be very interesting to see that Hamilton, you know, if Hamilton is the same price or even possibly even cheaper than uh, George Russell going into 2023, then, you know, we could say with some more confidence that we can put more trust into Hamilton's performance from practice sessions. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the worst from practice sorted by that, just to make it nice and clear. So we're going to sort by column D this time. And you can see George Russell worse than practice down here 10 times. So, and then you see Hamilton all the way up top there, only four times did he regress. So Hamilton, although he's a little bit inaccurate for predicting, on the whole, he wasn't accurate, but he was improving. And then George Russell also not very accurate, but on the whole, he wasn't accurate and he was getting worse. So that gives me, that lets me think that George Russell isn't, you know, isn't, doesn't fill me with confidence going from the practice session times alone. Um, so if we see George Russell in Bahrain in a few weeks time and he's like smashing it in FP1, FP2, FP3, then this data makes me just, you know, put the brakes on a little bit and not get too far ahead of myself thinking George Russell's a fantastic pick and maybe I'll be a little bit more... Uh, reticent to put on my team but there's obviously a lot of other factors but this is just useful information to to help decide that when it comes to it um worse than practice obviously we've looked we talked about a launch stroll you can see fernando alonso all over the place last season he wasn't accurate he's orange on the chart here six times he improved eight times he was worse only once was he exactly spot on so the alpines and particularly fernando alonso not accurate at all not much good there um, and then we have a quick look at the exact times as well, just so we can see it a bit clearer. Sort the range by column E. Um, so you can see on this column here, I've sorted it by this column. So you can see that Leclerc and Verstappen were the most accurate. And then behind them, uh, Lando Norris, like I say, Lando Norris, very accurate throughout the season. Um, Schumacher, Vettel, not very accurate at all. Like all these guys from here all the way down to there only had you know, one time or, or no times at all. So this is very interesting data for me. And I think overall the picture paints me, let's actually let's resort it by, sort it back to column B. So it's like that, yeah. So the overall picture it paints is one, one side of things is quite obvious. I think that, you know, the Ferraris and Red Bulls were the strongest and they were consistent and they're good picks and they're probably gonna be the same good picks going into this season, depending on the price. Um, Mercedes boys, <clears throat> Hamilton gives me a little bit more confidence from this data, but again, will depend on the price as well. Lando Norris going into the season. I think Lando Norris, almost irrelevant of his price. I think he's definitely going to be under 20 million and all the other drivers in that sort of category are going to be over 20 million. So I think Lando Norris could be, almost certainly is going to be the best turbo driver option at the beginning of the season because he's so consistent going from practice to qualifying and also into the race performance as well. And he's got the, the his rookie teammate. And I know Piastri is a good driver and he's had really good experience in F2 and F3 and he's won championships, blah, blah, blah. But I do think Lando Norris, you know, after dominating Ricardo, despite Ricardo himself struggling quite a bit, I think Lando Norris is going to be a fantastic pick. And this number, these numbers here just further back up the confidence I have in Lando Norris that, you know, as long as the, the prices kind of work out with who else you want in your team when they're revealed, I think Lando Norris for me is like... He's pretty much a banker going in my team at the moment. So, but we'll see. We'll see. We've obviously still got the um, testing as well in a few weeks' time. We'll see how that affects things as well. Um, but other things to pick out, like I say, I've already mentioned about Gasly. doesn't feel me with confidence. The Alpine doesn't feel me with confidence. Alonso's going to be an interesting one because he's in an Alpine that wasn't very reliable last season. He's going to Aston Martin, who you, we've seen what's happened from the practice sessions here. So Alonso is very inconsistent. So it'll be interesting to see if the, the trend continues. Will Alonso continually drop back in qualifying in from his pra uh, practice performance? Is he going to follow the trend of the Aston Martins of last year or is it going to be still quite erratic or is it going to change entirely because maybe the Aston Martin car itself is going to be changed quite dramatically over the winter break? We just don't know. We just don't know. So these numbers aren't completely useful because we don't know what's going on with the 2023 cars yet until we've seen a few races actually you know, take place and we don't know for sure. But these numbers are all we've got to go on. Um, I'm interested to know what you guys think of these numbers and whether you think they're reliable, whether they're helpful or anything else you can read into it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I have for this video. So thanks very much for watching and I'll be back 
very soon for some more preseason and F1 fantasy stuff to you know get your teeth into and start thinking about who you might want in your team as the price reveals are going to be up soon and then the actual testing will be happening very soon it's all happening fast and before you know it we're going to be locking in those teams and it's going to be very exciting so thank you very much for watching let me know what you guys think and I'll catch you shortly for some more some more F1 stuff bye bye for now